Welcome along to episode 761 of the Mill Bar. Jason Forrest here with you as ever. Coming up on the show this week, I'll be catching up with Jamie from Everyone's Talking About Jamie, which is at the Grand next week. Ivano Turco will be along for a bit of a chat. Laura Hamilton lets us know what's going on in the world of holidays as she finds a place in the sun to sit back and relax. We'll be hearing from the team at Rainbow Pantos about their forthcoming production, which is on the way. Richard Meek lets us know all about being Brad in the Rocky Horror Show at the Grand in February. We'll also be joined by Josh Jones, comedian, as we hear about his tour which is heading across the UK and stopping off in Stourbridge and we're having an atto with Sebi Hall all about the Sebi Hall Foundation and some great acts of kindness that's all on the way on the show this week Welcome to the Milk Bar 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 uh, Welcome to the Milk Bar uh, now, everybody's talking about Jamie. Is it Wolverhampton's Grand Theatre from the 23rd of January? That we've got limited tickets some of the nights already, and I reckon it's because one of the stars of the show uh, is going to be wearing people in the roles. Ivano Turco, who is with me now. Hello, sir. Hi. You How's okay? it going? Oh, all good. Thank you, the side. How about you? Oh, all good here. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the show. Now, this is a welcome return for an amazing musical. It's been to the Grand before, but I, you can't help but want to see this multiple times. And this is the reason why. We've got some nights that are limited availability already, that we've got people you know, desperate to get down there. But the tickets are great value too. So this is a win-win all round, isn't it? Absolutely. No, absolutely. I think it's a mission of ours to make sure that it can be accessible to everybody um you know there's no point if everybody can see themselves on stage if they actually can't see themselves on stage so yeah and it's a, a wonderfully representative show and mm. i think that it's we've also brought to life with the fact that the, the music is accessible the 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 characters you identify with and you, you can't yeah. help but love somebody in this show okay there's some you ain't gonna get on with quite so well either yeah but in the, you know in the main part you find a favorite quite quickly yeah, no, definitely. I would say so, definitely. So how do you approach a role like this, particularly one that's already been made so famous in film and with the, your predecessors in uh, the, the pairs of shoes you'll be wearing on stage? Yeah, um, I think out of my career so far, I think it's actually aided me in um, more ways, um, being able to see such different variations on like what has been done before, and, and seeing what exists kind of uh, like hones in for me what I now want to do because I've seen it in so many different like iterations, if that makes sense. I feel like mm -hmm. when you're doing something that's you starting it from the beginning, it's it, you've got to make all the hard decisions. Whereas I think when you've already got something built and you're adding your bits to it to just finesse it and make it yours, I think that's actually a easier position to find yourself in. Actually mm -hmm. funny, you say. But I mean, with your career so far, you say you, you only graduated what four years ago this summer, and yeah. uh, you know, so you know, this is it's still, you're still fresh to the to, to yeah. the stage, really. Uh, although I know you did some great stuff uh, whilst you were training, had some good for things like Cinderella. There's been all sorts of uh, 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 productions that you've been part of, and I know you're probably going to be a bit modest about this, but you have shone throughout, haven't you? I've tried to at least. I definitely have tried to. <laughs> with the show here, what? What's it like working with all the team behind it? Because this is, I mean, it's its a big production, isn't it, really? Yeah, no, so much. Um, It's lovely because the, the show that I had just done, I jumped in towards, like, in the in the middle of a run. Um, So it's nice to be able to start a new process with all of these people and we be able to build it together as opposed to, like, you jumping on something that's already going and you're trying to slot in with everybody else so it's been a beautiful collaborative effort with everybody here um I definitely think that's one of the best parts of the show is being able to create a space where we can all cultivate ideas and work and just have that synergy throughout everybody so yes like working with everybody is it's been amazing like I mean, and it, it pays to get along with them as well because we're <laughs> on the road together. We can't go anywhere. But the, I mean, the people you're working with, I mean, we we we, we throw the word legend around uh, a reasonable amount, but you wouldn't, with John Partridge, he's, he's rightly billed as a legend. And again, he's another one of those people who 
yeah it must be great to learn from where they are and you know being again so fresh to to what you're doing uh i'm gonna guess you're a bit like a sponge when you're surrounded by these sort of casts yes no yeah absolutely i think again because of the nature of where i started and and what i was doing i I've, I've always very much had that mentality of of sponging up and taking the things that i can to just better equip myself so you know to have people like that and and shobna um that are, that are in the cast it is wonderful and you know these are people that i grew up and they were on my television screen when i was younger um, so it is a little bit of like a weird crossroads now that we're doing the same thing. Like I'm still seeing your face, but it's not, you're not on a camera and I'm just at home sat watching, you know, we're there together. We're thinking water bottles or getting ready for the next scene. And it's just, it, it's, it's great. It's wonderful. But yes, yeah, sponge mentality is definitely the way forward. I've learned so far in my short, my brief career so far. <laughs> you're ever expanding career and that's the way it's going to continue yes, sir. To thank you. i like that but i mean with the songs in this show as well i mean they're not an easy thing but they're all part of telling an amazing story yeah the music is wonderful i think dan uh gillespie he did a wonderful job um with the music and and how beautifully it you know connects with the I mean, the subject matter in general and the time scale, but also in terms of the actual character's emotions. I think it's it's very interesting to be able to write a, so a, a really good song that also, you know, really shows an inner reflection of what's happening inside a character. I think it's, it's, it's easier to write a good song, but it's hard to write a good song that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um so I think for me the music feels like that so it's it's a treat to get to sing it every night and you know like again from being able to take over from people who have done it before and to be able to have my own spin and inject how I see or how I interpret the music also is a very freeing space in that sense as well to be in but the music is one of the biggest takeaways for me personally for the show. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you said. But, but you talk about takeaways, right? The tour is ongoing. Yeah. At some point, it is going to come to an end. What are you going to steal as a memory from this show? From a <gasps> set or whatever? Am I allowed to say? Yeah, well, we'll just, just wait, if you go, no, it'll keep it quiet. My tie. Yeah. Tie, definitely. And that's that's going to be the thing that because uh, you you will at some point build up a bit of a memorabilia catalogue. And when you've got the mansion yeah. in you know ten fifteen years time, there's going to be a room dedicated to the career, and and uh, it's going to be the tie that's framed on the wall. You're in. Yes, yes, it would be the bird uh, piece that I'll add to my collection. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I like what the small like trinkety thing, so it doesn't look like it's not too overpowering. I've got a ton of posters, like big posters that they're just like, oh, have this or take that, and I'm like, oh, can I have that? And it's spans over i mean you could never get a frame like that, but i just want to have it anyway nonetheless but yes definitely the tie and that will be part of the magic that reminds you of your time as jamie and again with the the, the show it is what what is the that is going to be your mental takeaway from this the 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 thing that uh is you rock back on that, that maybe the bit that you know when you're expecting to do something on telly on some show in years to come you go well i'm going to relive this moment from my youth oh, it's well, I know it's not actually that difficult to say. It's just probably not what anybody would expect. But I think my biggest takeaway is the feeling of not being the youngest <laughs> in a show. Weirdly enough, um, this is the first time that I'm not the youngest in a show that I've done. So it's such a different environment. And you feel like different kind of responsibilities settle into you because you're now not you don't have the excuse of being the youngest one to be like, you know, doe wide and looking around and not knowing how things go. So I very much treasured having the camp, the camaraderie of people that were my age, like on stage and we're having fun. Like that is also like, uh, you know, very far and few between. Um, you don't always necessarily, unless you're, you know, a little bit older than like more time, you'll be able to be with people that are like-minded like you and your age your generation like those things are so important in keeping a show up I think is just how well you can gel with everybody so that is one thing that I'll definitely relive over and over again is just knowing the feeling of having my friends and I've got a lot of friends that are in the show as well that we trained together so it wasn't just a sense of you know we're just the same age and we just have fun and kiki but like we're friends we've known each other for a while and it, we just all happen to be doing this together 
which is fun. It's exciting. But I'll relive that forever. We have to relive some memories through Insta and the like as well. I mean, are you an Instagram monster when it comes to shows and, and, and sharing stuff? Not as much as I should be, perhaps. Um, yes, I'm I'm not so, like... I'm not, I'm not very social media eloquent. Like I know how to use it and 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 know how to do, but I'm I'm not really as a, a socials kind of person so far. Mm-hmm. But look out because they're coming. We're sharpening them, and things will be released, and you know, content for everybody. We'll see how all that goes. We shall enjoy it amazingly. The twenty third of January through to the twenty seventh, it is Wolverhampton's Grand Theatre. GrandTheatre.co.uk to get your tickets. You can give the box office a call on oh one nine zero two. 429212. Ivana Turka, have an amazing time, a break a leg, and we look forward to seeing you do your thing as Jamie on stage at the Grand. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Rapunzel is Rainbow Pantomimes outing this year. It's all going on at the Dormston Mill Theatre from the 25th through to the 28th of January. I'm joined now by three of their number, Dan, Jackie and Susie. Hello. 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 Right, so first of all, uh, Jackie, let's start with you. Tell us a, a bit about the show itself. This is my first year with uh, with Rainbow Pantomimes. And this is a... Um, it's a, a, a take on Rapunzel. It's We've got a very sassy, very clever uh, Rapunzel. A good old black country wench, I would say, Rapunzel, um, who is kidnapped at birth from her mother, who is me, um, by an evil witch, Gothel, and locked away in a tower. So we revisit 18 years later and we find out how um the love interest maybe uh and uh the nanny and nanny's daughter um try to rescue rapunzel from the tower and bring her back and reunite her with her mother Okay, no spoilers. Uh, let's, let's, let's not tease the end. Uh, but uh, it's going to be uh, good fun along the way. Uh, Susie, tell us what you're up to. Well, <laughs> a lot. I um, At the moment, I'm, I'm sort of living and breathing this show. I am playing the part of the king, mm-hmm. um, Rapunzel's dad. Um, I'm also the, um, the head costume person. I'm also in charge of promotion on the committee so I, I am literally living and breathing this <laughs> <laughs> it's keeping you busy which is a fun bit and uh oh, it, it, it's it, it's all about bringing a panto together like this as well and this is where rainbow absolutely shine isn't it it really is the um we're a group that sort of prides itself on being really inclusive and sort of trying to find something for everybody and trying to get as many people involved as possible it's really sort of community driven and you know it's it's very um we're all very very close and you know it, it's got that lovely vibe to it community driven but with real quality performers as well oh absolutely um that's that's something that we've always that we've always sort of strived for as well that we really sort of push ourselves to get to get as as good as we can possibly be Mm-hmm. And uh, Dan, I believe you need to lose the facial hair for the role that you have within this gig. I do. Yeah, so I am playing Hilda, who is the dame, which obviously is a fantastic part. It's so much fun to play. I can have so many interactions with audience and cast members. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant part in a very well-written pantomime. So, you know, I, I, I was guessing you, guessing you may be the gothic witch Gothel, to be fair, but... Uh... Well, who knows? <laughs> there might be a... Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. You'll have to come and watch. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be uh, an awesome show. And when it comes to, to music, Jackie, what have we got in there? Are there some uh, tunes that we're all going to know and love to have a, a bit of a bop along to in the audience? Oh, some right bangers. Yeah, you'll all enjoy it. There's, uh, there's a chance to sing along. There's a chance to join in with the... The traditional community sing along session. Um, there's lots you can. We we hope that the audience have as much fun as we do. I have never felt so excited to actually 
do to perform a pantomime as I, as I, I have with this company. As Susie yeah. said, they really make you feel very, very welcome. And um, and I hope that shines through because we have so much fun doing it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Susie, I mean, uh, when it comes to promoting something like this, uh, Rapunzel's a story we don't see as a panto very often. So it, it must be great to be able to share news of something which uh, is somewhat unique. Uh, and we certainly haven't seen one, I don't think, anywhere in the area this Christmas. Absolutely. It's, um, it's something a little bit different. And it's nice to sort of have something that nobody else is doing that that that's a real sort of that's a real lever when you're trying to promote something like this because it is absolutely as you said unique um and people love the story of tangled you know the the, the disney film and whatever and you know that that got a lot of traction sort of a few years ago and so it's something that's the people do actually really the story that people love as well so we can sort of pull all these factors together when we're promoting it and um there's some really fun characters in it and and uh dan i mean you you, you do get to be one of those fun characters uh okay. and i mean were you not tempted to go for the rapunzel part as well and grow your hair well um unfortunately as you can tell jason with getting on a bit i am uh losing it slightly um but no i think I, as, as I, I've never played a game ever, uh, never had the chance to, and I was very apprehensive going into it. And honestly, like Jackie, it's my first season with Rainbow, and everyone's been welcoming, supportive. Um, as you'll know, I've got I've got my mum at the task of doing my costumes. Mm -hmm. Susie's got more than enough, so I've got and I've got some fantastic costumes, wigs, boots, the lot. So 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 much so I'm, you've been wearing them out and about, uh, probably yeah, since absolutely. the. Other... Absolutely. Absolutely. No. Friday nights on town, and you, you all know who I am. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to miss him for the big hair. Uh, but, but Susie, <laughs> okay, then, so we, we know everyone's going to need tickets for this. Where do they go to to get them? Doing the ticket sales through CT again this year. So it's ct.co.uk forward slash Rapunzel. Um, and they're all on there. We've got shows running from the 25th of January right through to the 28th. There's six shows there to choose from few evening shows the saturday has a matinee sunday we've gone a little bit earlier this year so we have an 11 a.m show and a 3 p.m show uh, it's all taking place <laughs> we said down at the uh, dormston mill uh theater at uh, the yeah. uh, and it's a great venue as well isn't it? that's the thing it's a proper theater Absolutely. it's uh it, it, yeah. it's, it's, it sort of feels like something which has uh, had the boards tried for a couple of centuries it's uh just the right shape to make it work it'll be fantastic for uh, the team from rainbow pantos down there break a leg everyone have a great time and uh make sure you make the most of rapunzel running from the 25th of january thank, thank you, you very much thank you Now, Josh Jones is heading out and about across the UK with his tour, Cobsmacked. He's arriving in Stourbridge as our closest gig in the Midlands. That's coming up on the 24th of March. And he joins me now, complete with onesie and all, to have a little natter about the show. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, are you? I'm OK. So as we talk, I think we've, we've disturbed your day, haven't we? We've kind of woken you up. Um, no, I, I kind of thought this was... Um... Tomorrow, I got mixed up, but that's definitely on me. <laughs> and um, today's like my day off, so I was having a bit of a lie in. But, Don't yeah. blame you. Seems like a perfectly sensible plan. Because, I mean, it is hard work when you're touring up and down the country with these gigs. Uh, you, you work some funny hours, and, of course, you don't get a chauffeur for these, do you? No. So, like, the other day, uh, so yesterday I spent, like, five hours on a train and and it was delayed because you know British trains, and I couldn't get a seat, so I stood up for two of the five hours. And you're just like, no, yeah. It's it's not quite the celebrity lifestyle we envisage for you, to be fair. No, I sp I mainly spend most of my time on my own on trains or coaches. <laughs> Does this mean you get a chance to to write material when you're out and about on the road? I can't write on um, trains because I, I don't know. I feel a bit sick. I think I've travelled so much that I get a bit travel sick. That's not so good. And you don't even get to wear the onesie for that either, do you? No, I have to wear like real human clothes. It's horrible. It takes the fun out of the day. But... Yeah, it does. <laughs> but tell us a bit about the show Gobsmacked and how this one came together. Because it's something, did, was it last year you were at Edinburgh with that? Uh, yeah, the August just gone, yeah. Well received there. 
and Hetton's taking it out on the road across the UK. Yeah, so we did um, we did a tour of it um, from like the end of September till December, really, and then that went well. So they wanted to add a few ex like few extra dates. Back on the road again, doing your thing. Yeah, but I'm excited to do Stour Bridge because I've played that venue quite a bit and I really like it. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's known for its music as well, isn't it? So, I mean, you're not tempted to bring a guitar along and strum a few chords at the same time. It's all going to be comedy, isn't it? No, I can't do anything. Um, I've got no rhythm. I did a salsa class not recently, uh, quite recently, and the the woman was like, you're one of the worst people we've ever had. And, and salsa can be a bit freeform as well, can't it? So, I mean, that is pretty poor. Yeah, I was terrible. <laughs> so, uh, do, do, have there been any new hobbies for 2024 then? Obviously, salsa's one that's failed miserably. Uh, so, I started in 20... Well, the, in, like, November 2023, I started bouldering, do you know, indoor rock climbing. Right. So, I've started doing that, which what is that? fun. Is, is it purely the, the sense of achievement when you use all the red bricks rather than the yellow ones to get up the wall? Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's just something a bit thrilling because you do this as a job. You kind of get used to having a bit of an adrenaline rush. And I don't know, there's something quite like satisfying about, oh, I could fall off this wall and hurt myself, but I'll try not to. <laughs> and, and, and there's crash mats. Aren't they? they are, you're, you are doing this with crash mats. There are crash mats, but if you're quite high up, it's still going to really hurt. <laughs> so you are now basically a, a wall climbing rebel, which I, I actually. Yeah, like. I've become a bit of an adrenaline junker. <laughs> well, this, this could lead on to all sorts of things. It'll be bungee jumps and everything before you know it. But I've been thinking of what I do. Have you ever seen the TV show The Traitors? I know the traitors a fantastic show. There was a bit where they jumped out of a helicopter into the water with like um just dived into water out of a helicopter and I was like, I need to do I wanna do that. You wanna give that a go? Yeah. Now I just wanna just do loads of dangerous stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure your life insurance policy will have words to say about that. But it gives you something <laughs> to talk about as well. I mean, it could be the next tour is, is sort of Josh Jones yeah. in, in plaster. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I could come on in um, like a full cast, full body cast. It'll be an interesting one. Okay, so but, but back to Gobsmack then, because this is the current tour. This is what you're taking into Stourbridge on the, in March. So yes. uh, what are you looking at here? Because uh, you, you, you're known for having yeah, a fairly upbeat comedian. Yeah. So uh, the show is, um, it's just a lot of stupid stories from my life, really. Um and um, yeah, I don't know. It's just like a lot of it is just stuff where I've got myself in a bit of um bother. I'm I think I'm quite a decent comedian. I don't think I'm, and I think I'm a decent person, mm-hmm. but I don't think I'm like good at life. Like I'm doing this in my onesie. I thought this was tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not and. And it's in my diary as today. That was just my mind is wrong. <laughs> so like everything, I, I always just make mistakes. And the show's a bit about that. And I, I'm in my 30s now. And I kind of thought I'd have my life together quite a bit more. Do you know what I mean? But what what is it you want from life? Because, I mean, you've got the celebrity status. You've got a great career. Uh, you've got a fantastic ones. What more could you hope for? Do you know what? I was thinking the other day of that. Um, one day I might quit comedy and open a pie shop. <laughs> and I really, I'm not even joking. I think that would be great. Uh, I don't know. I'd love to meet the love of my life, get married, and have a baby. But That's who? The thing. If that yeah. or pies, one or the other. That are pies. And for this year, I just want a few more holidays. Sounds good. Uh, but maybe uh, uh, an adventure holiday, which also combines your love of pies, and you can actually source pie fillings whilst jumping out of a helicopter over a lake somewhere. Do you know what? That actually sounds like a great challenge for a show. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that works. Yeah, you, yeah. you can probably sell that to Channel 5. That'll, that'll work. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Channel 4, I think we'll go for that. It's a bit yeah. exciting. 
Yeah, so it's it, it's up there. Yeah, but I mean, uh, when it comes down to the the pie making exploits, though, I mean, are, are you somebody who's good at a short crust, or, or are you going to end up on bake off at some yeah. point? I can make good short crust pies. Yeah, I make my own pastry. Um, sometimes I go a bit wild and I put cheese in my pastry, which is mental. It's probably <laughs> definitely not good for you. That that may not work out too well with Paul Hollywood. I don't know what he'll have to say about that. I, yeah, but sometimes I'd, I think I'd just say, shut up, Paul, I know best. <laughs> this is, I'm better at pies. Okay, well, there the, the could be uh, an, an interesting uh, uh, Bake Off uh, episode if you do manage to get involved in that one at some point. So we'll we'll, we'll look yeah. out for that. Uh, but, uh, you, you're enjoying your comedy, though, in spite of the pie aspirations. And uh, what what do you think you know, makes for a, a good tour? I mean, what is the tour highlight for you? Obviously, the, the gigs themselves are pretty blimmin' important, but is there something else that really you know, makes it sparkle for you when you go somewhere? Do you know what I like? I, I've got a t- um, tour support, and I like have I like that. I like that I've done tour support for people, and I think it's a really good like opportunity to like build up a bit of a fan base because tour shows are a lot nicer than normal gigs in mm-hmm. general. So it's quite nice for them to have other gigs, and like I'll, I've had quite a few different people do my tour spot, but the person who's done most of him is a guy called Jack McLean, and he's like a northern gay guy. So it's nice for him because he knows that the audience have come to see me, so, like, he knows that they're all going to be accepting and they're all going to be nice. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think that's my favourite thing. Okay, cool, and uh, yeah, just sharing a stage with someone who's going to make you laugh before you go on is is there yeah, just another good way of making the night bright? Yeah, definitely. You basically you get paid to go and watch other stand up comedians. Well, I have to actually pay their wages. I don't like that bit, but apart from that, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so that should be good fun. So the tour, as we say, is ahead and out about. Of course, we can find you on the socials and the like too. And, and uh, is there any telly coming up? Where do we find everything that's going on? Yeah, there is stuff coming up. There's a quite a big thing coming up, but I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it. I don't know. I'm so sorry. I'm not. I'm so rubbish at stuff like that. <laughs> I just get told this is coming out, so post this, and then I do. That's okay, where it. do we find your post when you do get told to post stuff? I am on Instagram. If you have Instagram, I'm uh, Joshy Jones ninety two. I don't know why that's my handle. So, yeah, and I've deleted my Twitter and my Facebook. I just have Instagram. Okay, you're happy there. Sharing photos of you, your pies, if you're ex- yeah, exciting exploits up rock walls and the the, the onesie, which uh, is yeah, looking resplendent even now. You have, you, you have to have a groomer for that uh, that onesie, don't you? I mean, that, that's going to take some control. Yeah. Then. Also, it's literally, because normally stuff like this, um, people don't look after it and it stinks, but this is... I don't think I've worn it since it's come out of the washing machine, so this is fresh just for you. I, I appreciate that. That is uh, much uh, appreciated and understood. Uh, I, mean, I know you're going to have a great time at all. The date we're looking at is on March 24th. It is coming up at Katie Fitzgerald's The Fits of Laughter evening uh, in Stourbridge. Grab your tickets that... from their website. And, uh, Josh, have a fantastic time on tour, and don't injure yourself when you're doing your exploits, will you? Yeah, thank you. And, yeah, come to that show. And if you can't come watch me there, go watch someone else there because that is a great venue. And Ellis War, Sarah. That's a great venue. I love it. And the people who run it are so lovely. Oh, Josh, love so. to catch up for you. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll enjoy seeing you on tour soon. Thank you so much. Now, when it comes down to taking a break in 2024, we'll need to be more savvy than ever to keep our costs in place, but also have an absolutely brilliant time. Somebody who knows how to go out and have a great time when holidaying or maybe finding a place in the sun is expert Laura Hamilton. Good afternoon. (laughs) Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. I hope we find you well and and enjoying uh, the prospect of a, a nice breakaway somewhere warm at some point soon. Oh, well, I just got back, actually, from a skiing break. Mm-hmm. Um, 
which I love. I'm a big fan of uh, of the slopes and skiing. Mm -hmm. um, but I am travelling on Sunday to the Sunshine, but that's uh, for some filming. So, yeah, I, I've got a lot of travel planned, as mm -hmm. always, with, with work. It, it's all right and, with um, work. I mean, you get to go somewhere warm and sunny uh, uh, quite regularly, and, and, and you're being paid for it as well, which is brilliant. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, 40 million Brits have got holidays planned this year. Mm-hmm. So, you Absolutely. know, we all love our trips, we all love our holidays, but we also love a bargain. You know, apparently, according to research, 67% of Brits um, only book a holiday if it's discounted. That's according to Club Med. So, um, you know, we do like a deal and there are deals to be had right now. I mean, I'm sure people are aware they've seen lots of adverts on television. It's kind of like um a, a peak seasons now to kind of book the deals are out there they're to be had um and it's kind of making the most of those particularly now like you know cost of living people want to get the best deals possible and um yeah just keep an eye out for them yeah because i mean people will not only want to get great value but also know they've got the protection as well and this is exactly. where the likes of club med come in because you know you've got it, it, it's at all protected absolutely at, at, at all protected at all bonded um, and so, you know, what I will say is if anyone's kind of like thinking, oh, well, I can get a bed on myself, go away, do your research. And if you can find that holiday, um, uh, like ch cheaper, a better deal, then go back to Club Med and just say to them, do you know what? Look, this is what I found. And, and actually, you might find that it's not actually the same holiday. And mm -hmm. the package that Club Med put together uh, will include things that perhaps you wouldn't have been able to include because um they do have access to to things that you know we we don't have access to and, and not just even you about, but yeah even me <laughs> you know between the 30th of jan and the 2nd of february and um, they're offering up to 20 percent off of all of their holidays whether it's a ski holiday uh, you know a break in the sun and if I, I get kind of mixed responses people will sometimes say to me why book why book early what's the point of booking early because if you book late actually you know you can get you can get really good deals the difference is yes there might be deals if you leave it last minute but you don't have the choice so when you book early not only do you get the discounts and the deal but you actually have a bigger selection of places to choose from when you leave it to the last minute that selection is is not there and I think when you book early, you've got that countdown in your head as well, knowing what you've got ahead of you. And you, yeah. you're not, you're not, you know, in last minute, it can be a mad panic. You know, you haven't got anything sorted. You, you don't pack the right stuff. You, be prepared, get everything together and and know where you're going and what you're going to do when you get there. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. As you say, get that get that date locked in the diary and, and the countdown, something to look forward to. And uh, so we but just... there are, you know, there are just it's also a side of... Um, talking about like looking for the deals that are to be had um, offered by Club Med. Um, you can, if for example, you're going on a skiing holiday, because there's that kind of like idea that, oh, skiing could be expensive, but actually there are other ways that you could be savvy. Um, and I was saying to somebody that, you know, I've got children, my children ski with me every year, they grow, they grow out of the ski clothes. Don't spend a fortune on those ski clothes. Reach out to friends that might have been skiing and sort of say, look, have you got a ski jacket that we could borrow? Or, you know, don't go out and just spend a load of money on that kind of stuff. Spend the money on on booking the holiday um, because that's, you know, like where, you know, the money should really go and where the memory is going to be created. The mm -hmm. clothes, just just save, save the money in, in those areas. Well, there's some bits you can rent as well when you're out there too. Yeah, but I mean, if, if you've got friends that have been and that yeah, can loan even better. even better. <laughs> yeah, get it for free. So obviously, you know, it is time to think about and plan our holiday. You've mentioned that you're off filming in a bit. Where where are you? Are you know, to tell us where you are filming? Yeah, so I'm heading off to Mahaca, um, which is near Almeria in Spain this weekend. Um, so I'm filming away for a week there um, with with a place in the sun. Then I've got some more dates coming up in February. In March, I've got some, some dates uh, all within Europe. And then I'm actually doing a London marathon in April. So I'm going to take a few weeks um, to, to be kind of UK based mm -hmm. for that. And then, you know, I've got dates and revisits. So we do a revisit show now where we go back and catch up with people and find out what life is, is like um, since they've bought the property through a place in the sun. And so I've got a few of those episodes in as well as lots of other things going on. So it's going to keep you busy. But of course, you'll also no doubt be out there with Club Med sampling some sunshine in uh, a, a yeah. break too. 
well half term's coming up so you know it's always good I, that my children have traveled with me since they were three weeks old so I think you know families that are thinking ahead thinking right what can we want what do we want to do for half term holiday what do we want to do for summer holiday you know make the most of those that make the most of that up to 20 percent off between the 30th of January and the 2nd of Feb okay where do we go to find those deals so head to clubmed.co.uk for more information and, you know, pick up the phone and speak to one of their agents and they'll tell you what's what's available, what's on offer and help mm-hmm. you put together a package. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's about talking to a travel agent. You, yeah, fine, you can do it online, do a bit of Googling. It's not the same as talking to people who work in the industry. And it's the reason yeah, why people talk you, to you, you know. about houses out there. <laughs> exactly. Talk to you firsthand, you know, find out where they've been, what's good, if they've got kids, what the experience is like for the kids. And as I say, like booking through, um, booking through them does mean that you are protected if anything does, because things don't always run smoothly. We know that. Okay, it's mm-hmm. nobody's fault if flights are delayed, but if things do go wrong and you need want, you want somebody at the end of the phone, it's always nice to have that protection. Well, it, it, it's even as simple as though you buy the whole thing as a package rather than buying your transfer separate to your flights or your hotel. If your flight is delayed for whatever reason, as part of a package, your hotel's fixed too. If you're yeah. not part of a package, yeah. it's like we're not talking about the industry falling apart here because we know yeah. that like the club, club med are, are doing great things. But it's, it's 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 protecting you from the little things as well as the big things with that all. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a good way of doing it, a great way to get a break and enjoy some sun, whatever time of year it is. Laura Hamilton, exactly. a place in the Thank sun. You. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Love is a chat. Thank you. Now, when the Rocky Horror Show descends upon the Grand Theatre from the 6th through to the 10th of February, somebody's going to start every night innocent and learn new wicked ways before the end of the show. It's Richard Meek who's playing Brad. Hello, sir. Hello, nice to see you. Good to see you too. And obviously, uh, a, a, a triumph of a show. Uh, how many decades has it been going now, in the ideas? Five. This year, uh, well, last year and into this year, we're celebrating its 50th anniversary, which is wild. It's absolutely. And uh, it's just such a, an amazing show. So many people part of it. And uh, once you are in the you know, Rocky Horror, you never want to leave, do you? It truly is a family, and I and I know that can be thrown around a lot, but it is a true family in all, all sense of the word, like no, no other show. And anybody you ask uh, who is a fan of the show feels exactly the same way. I always see people on the forum saying, you know, so lovely to see my Sunderland Rocky Horror family or my um, so-and-so Rocky family. It's just a community as well. It's wonderful. But it's a show that you've you've been to and then left and then come back to? I have indeed, yeah. I I first played uh, the part of Brad Majors uh, in 2007. Not that long ago. Not that long ago. In the original production of Chris Luscombe's version of um, this Rocky Horror show, which has been so hugely successful, resulting in it touring almost every other year since for almost about 70, 16, 17 years. And I've been very lucky to have been invited back um, to rejoin several times over the years, including for the 50th anniversary where I, I'm playing Brad and also um, covering the role of Frank, um, which has been amazing. Yeah, have, you, have you had many editings of Frank so far? Well, I, I'm very lucky that um, the guy that plays Frank Stephen, who's like one of my best friends, he um, was very lucky to have uh, had a child this year with his lovely fiance. So I got to do on part of the international tour two weeks, a two week engagement in Barcelona, uh, which was amazing. So uh, playing for the international crowds was really exciting. And it must be quite a challenge, though, sort of swapping between roles and a, a show you know so well. Yeah, it's very challenging because often. Um, most of the stuff I do, I'm doing with Frank. So it's a real flip of the brain. Luckily, Stephen is so good that he never, ever, ever goes off. It was <laughs> from the first time and the second time I did it, it was 13 months. So um, he's consistent. He is a powerhouse. Um, so I don't have to do it that, that often. But when I do, yeah, it takes a while for my brain to flip round. 
Um, when you are touring a show like this, I mean, it's the reaction of the audiences which sort of spur you on. The fact there's uh, sort of now by default audience participation, and uh, it's almost like we've got a script we were supposed to recite when we're there. So, uh, yeah, have any of them got it wrong recently? And I know the grand normally get it right. Uh, well, I think the only time it really goes wrong is either a timing thing or if people are quite tipsy in Act Two and they sort of and they've never seen the show, they start feeling a bit brave. And the, the nature of the show is obviously the script and the interaction. So they start attempting maybe their own interaction, which doesn't always um which doesn't always work. So but stick, mostly stick with the script. Um, That's what we're looking for. Stick with the script if you know the script. But you know, we have been known to um break the character and laugh occasionally if something is just just doesn't work or goes completely wrong. But we always appreciate the effort. <laughs> that's always good and i say with the uh the show the costumes it's fairly simple costuming for you isn't it most of the way through until a little bit towards the end yeah i mean i always said it's set to my dress up we're here in dublin this week and um they, she bought my costume and i said it's fairly easy until act two because that one i begin in a suit and i get stripped on stage down to my vest and pants so that takes away her job on stage. <laughs> and then I spend the rest of the show literally until the very end in a lab coat. It's very comfortable um, and a bit, pair of flat shoes. It's a bit like walking around in slippers and a dressing gown, to be honest with you. So ch <laughs> chilling out on stage, best way of doing it, and enjoying yeah. some great songs. Yeah. And then in the end, I'm in, you know, slightly more elaborate, um, but still very little clothing. <laughs> it's, it's, quite, it's quite light on the, on, on the budget for that sort of thing. The rest of it, big budget, absolutely fantastic. And... Uh, <laughs> But is it is it a show that you'd seen and been part of the audience with before you became part of it, or was it, or was it just not in your circle because you were too busy working? For some reason, um, it was something I it had completely passed me by, in terms of even seeing the film. And when I had my one of my auditions, the director said to me, "Are you familiar with the show?" And I said, "I have to be honest with you, I've never even seen the film." And he said, "Great." Don't watch it, don't listen to it, don't do anything. Just keep doing what you're doing, and that's fine. I think that, in a way, by not being familiar with it at all, the way I approached it was different to how everybody else approached it. So it worked in my favour. But obviously now, um, I could recite it backwards. So <laughs> Don't. Let's do it forwards. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> it is the Rocky Horror Show at the Grand Theatre. 01902 429212 is the box office number. Grandtheatre.co.uk to get tickets. 6th through to the 10th of February. Have a fantastic time with it. Break a leg. Don't ladder any tides that may be involved in the show at any point. And Richard and <laughs> me will look forward to seeing you on stage doing your bit as Brad. Yeah, see you soon. For a couple of years now, the Sebi Hall Foundation has been doing amazing things, raising smiles and awareness, and also helping those who are disadvantaged do some amazing stuff. To tell us more, I'm joined now by Ashley Hall, mother of Sebi Hall. Hello to you both. Hi. Hi. Now, obviously, you've been doing some great work for the last couple of years, and something amazing happened at Christmas because you had a bucket collection at the Grand. We did. We had a bucket collection at the ground, absolutely. £9,000 has been raised, and this is going to help those young people who need a, a few new experiences in their life because there's something very special happening with this cash. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, we started, we were chatting to the Wolverhampton Grand and um, they were really involved with, they really liked the idea of Sebi Hall's Acts of Kindness because why do you do Acts of Kindness, Seb? To make people feel... Oh. Happy inside. Happy inside. So Sebi started doing acts of kindness to make people feel happy inside about three years ago. Uh, well, for lockdown, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, and basically has done a random act of kindness every day for three years. And he had a um, a want to help others at uh, Christmas time this for a project this year. What do you like about Christmas at the theatre, Sebi? You like to go to the pack. And and pantomimes. Pantomimes. He loves to go to the pantomimes. And we were talking about not everyone is able to go to pantomimes uh, due to disadvantage or disability sometimes. Um, so Sebi decided that this Christmas he wanted to fundraise to raise money to help other people go to pantomimes. So we were chatting to um, Adrian Jackson at the Wolverhampton Grand Theatre mm -hmm. because Sebi loves the Wolverhampton Grand Theatre, don't you? Yeah. And... Um, they have just been amazing. They've embraced the whole message of that. What do you say, Sebi? 
anyone can be. Kind. And what is kindness? Kindness is a superpower. Superpower. So he says kindness is a superpower. Mm -hmm. So they embraced it at the ground and they they sort of wove the story of kindness into their pantomime and at the end they talked about Sebi's random acts of kindness and so Sebi what did you provide them every day Six, 64 te teddy, teddies. teddy 64 Sebi teddies and they decided it was they decided to give out a teddy to a random member of the audience at every show so the Wolverhampton ground could do their own random act of kindness inspired by Sebi. So the bucket collections themselves raised £9,000 and, and also Sebi's donated some money uh, himself from what he'd raised before that mm -hmm. and he's managed to provide 200 tickets for refugee children um, across the area before even the bucket collection started. So that's what he did before Panto started and then throughout Panto that's what they raised. And Sebi, Panto was amazing, wasn't it? It was an absolutely brilliant show this year. Yeah, it's, it's, it was the most amazing show. What did you love about the pantomime this year, Sebi? Who did you love? Ta uh, Tamra. Tamra. Tam Ryan, really good. Mm -hmm. And 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 um, the Dragonella. Yeah. She was amazing. Yeah. And who's your favourite princess in town? Evie. Evie. Pick Pickle. Evie Pickerel. <laughs> and we saw so we saw the panto so many times. It was absolute genius. But the fact that they took on the the message of kindness and and they then were kind as well. That's what Sebi's all about because uh, Sebi's born with um, a rare chromosome anomaly and has sometimes, he doesn't mind me saying, communication difficulties. And um, he started this to stop people feeling lonely who'd got disabilities. Uh, so the fact that, as Sebi said, anyone can be kind, the pantomime has just run with it. And so it's been a brilliant season. And it's a really worthwhile cause. Yeah, and I mean, with the work that you do uh, through all the fundraising, or obviously this is you know, raising funds, raising smiles, and sharing those acts of kindness, sebihall.com is where you can go to to find out about all of it. And you can get your own Sebi Teddy on there as well, can't you? You can, absolutely. And in fact, across the whole of the West Midlands this year, Sebastian has provided a 1,000 tickets for disadvantaged and disabled children this year at the Wolverhampton Grand, the Birmingham Hippodrome and the Litchfield Garrick. So we provi he's provided a thousand tickets um, so that anyone can access the theatre, which is which is the way it should be. Yeah, and it is that sort of act of kindness, isn't it? It's not about what an immediate need is or what's missing. It's about having the feeling inside of being cared for. And that's something everybody deserves. Yeah, and in fact, even last night, Sebi, we were at the co-op and our local co-op sells off flowers at 10 pence at the end of the day uh, if they're out of date. So you bought with 10 pence some flowers. And who did you give it to, Sebi? The cli the, the, cli cleaner. the cleaner in the shop. And what did she do, Seb? She cr cried. She cried. So just a little 10 pence to give someone some flowers. It made her cry with happiness and it just changed her whole day. It can be really simple things. Yeah, and to say it's, it's amazing what you can do. Sebi, it is amazing what you're doing. We're absolutely, really proud of you and everything's going on. I know you're going to keep up the good work. Congratulations on what you've done here. And when do those people get to start to go and see shows at the Grand? I think they're using it for outreach projects and, and, and um, all sorts of things to, to for access within the theatre. So, yes, hopefully it will help everyone throughout the whole year. Absolutely brilliant. Well, you can follow the Act of Kindness and, of course, you know, go along and see everything else is going on at sebihall.com, S-E-B-B-I-E hall.com, your very own website. Uh, loads of great pictures on there as well of things happening. Loads of great pictures. And, and he's on Facebook, Sebi Hall Acts of Kindness and Instagram, and there's lots of pictures of the Wolverhampton Grand on there. And I have to say, how how's the team been, Sebi? Well, they've been all awesome. awesome. They really are the most amazing team at the Wolverhampton Grand Theatre. And the actors had just been genius. Everybody has been really kind. kind. That's the way we like it. Kindness is king, and it can make a massive difference to somebody's day. Well, for now, Ashley and Sebi Hall, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. What do you say, Sebs? Bye bye. 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 That's all for this week. Thank you so much for joining me back with episode 762 next week. I'll see you then. Ta for now. Goodbye from the milk bar. 
Goodbye from the milk bar. Goodbye from the milk bar. Goodbye from the milk bar. Yeah. Goodbye from the milk bar. Yeah.